All right, everyone, welcome to the intro for the second part of this two-part series uh, we had with Dr. Josh Cochran here. Uh, today, we go into more details of um, kind of where he started with his practice and how he's grown it from there. Uh, like we said before, it, it, I just think his model is super, super cool. And it, it really goes to show how um, he can kind of keep people in his network uh, with, you know, having them buy in, be a partner. Uh, I, I just think it's a really good model. And I definitely see benefits of, you know, associates versus partners, but mm -hmm. I, I really liked everything he had to say here in this episode. Yeah. You know, there, there's so much to be said about just what you allude to associates versus partners and like how you grow things. And it seems to me like, yes, so much of it comes down to communication. So much of it comes down to culture. So much of it comes down to values. But a lot of it is really just the art of the deal. You know, how do you make it work for all the parties therein and how do you incentivize people? to to stay there i think you described it as uh to make it sticky right like you want people to want to stick around and how do you do that well you incentivize them and you make you know they're they're taking a certain slice of the pie but you are showing them how that pie is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger and so will their slice um and i think really that's where the gap is and you know how uh, there's so much talk and, and, and we do it too we talk about how partnerships are just generally not our favorite thing because they just don't go well uh, so often but it's not because intrin intrinsically partnerships are flawed in fact they can actually um, be the fuel um, for like a really, really big fire. And uh, we kind of get into that um, here in this episode and to, you know, uh, to hear about how Josh was able to pull that off. Um, certainly his, his business acumen um, helped to, uh, you know, afford that opportunity. But um, I think also it's, you know, as we alluded to before, his magnetism and um, just his ability to connect to people and, and um, find like-minded folks and, um, you know, make it worth, worth it for them. So, um, you know, we'll let him take it away and then uh, we'll um, dish up a little bit on uh, a little bit on everything afterward. Awesome. Enjoy you guys. Yeah. Wow. You know, I, I think that um, I'm kind of starting to see a picture where if, you know, a new grad were coming out and they were looking, they had that sort of entrepreneurial itch and they wanted, you know, they had that value system that was built around growth. Um, and they wanted to go out and, and be a part of something big and, and grow it, you know, it was just as soon as they got out of school. I could see this being a potential uh, road for them. This, you know, finding an opportunity like this, a network of, of dentists uh, similar to the one that you've got going on in Spokane. Um, so, you know, I, I can see the potential there. I can, for sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm curious, you know, what would be your message to new grads coming out? Like what, what makes this opportunity right for you as opposed to going and trying to do your own thing and eat glass? Right. Because some of these, you know, there's, there's a lot of vibes going on here. Right. We talked about startups. These are people that kind of like to build things from the ground up. But now we're also talking about partnerships in a larger group. And that almost seems like on a different side of the spectrum. So who are we really speaking to then? Um, like, like what audience am I speaking to or what do you? Well, rather. Sorry. So I, I know that was all over the place. I'm, I'm pretty famous for those. So uh, what I mean is a new grad that might be hearing about an opportunity like this, where you've got this large practice with, with 10 doctors, which I think we need to talk a little bit about how that actually works and looks and what that office actually like how that operates. Cause that sounds massive. Um, you know, how can, how can they know that an opportunity like this is what they should be looking for or trying to start? You got to start with what you want. Uh, you know, uh, you know, right. the vision changes every year. You got to re redo it, right? If if anyone's ever read "Living Your Best Year Ever" by Darren Hardy, uh, mm -hmm. or you haven't read that, I would absolutely read that. That'll help you crystallize your goals and the eight parts of your life every year. So I would highly recommend reading that book. Uh, it's going to change every year, right? Which is fine, but at least you come at every year with intention. Um, okay. A purpose-driven life. Okay, um, so yeah, so coming out of school, um, so let's say your vision is whether it's a single practice, uh, just you, or it's a multiple doctors in one practice. Um, typically, people are looking for a few things. They're uh, typically looking for uh, clinical autonomy, yeah. okay, and support. They're looking for financial freedom and lifestyle. Uh, they're looking for advancement of their clinical skills and, and maybe their business schools skills, right? Mentorship, collaboration with other doctors, right? I mean, those are the things people are typically looking for. And so when you're joining a practice with one dude or one female, you don't get a lot of that. When you're doing it on your own, 
you better have a really good network of dentists, yeah, knowledgeable dentists, right? Or else you're just gonna like go very slowly, and it's gonna be yeah. very hard. So, um, I, I, let's let's talk about corporate, like working sure. for Aspen, working for Hardland with these training programs. I've worked for Pacific. Okay. Now the, the issue there typically is ethics, right? Do I really want to recommend a crown? I think they just need an MOD, right? That's like the, the thing I usually see is the challenge there. If you can find a, 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 a well-run dental group that aligns with you ethically, I think that's a great place to start. You make good money, you learn systems, right? And you get a good clinical skill set. There's an Aspen in town that probably the third busiest aspen in the country. Yeah. They do a ton of hybrids, implant overdentures, right? Like, gosh, if I was there two years learning all that, like, and those systems, like, that would help me out so much. I have a buddy in San Antonio. He started out getting, like, 225 patients a month. He, uh, he does a ton of ortho. I mean, his practice, absolutely crushing it, right? Yeah. After, like, Three years, they're probably doing like three and a half million, right? He's just crushing it. Why? Well, he got out of school, worked for a dentist who taught him ortho, and then he worked for Pacific, right? Like he had that skill set learned, right? So what, what I would say is like join join somebody. There's another friend of mine worked for a hybrid clinic in, in Utah, okay? Like he didn't make a ton of money his first year. But but he learned how to do hybrids, right? He learned that whole system top to bottom, right? And you could leverage that skill set into something else. So um, it, it really depends on what someone's exact vision is. But gosh, like surround yourself. You've heard this one, right? You're 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 the sum of the five people you you hang out with the most, right? Or a rising <laughs> tide lifts all boats. Like surround yourself with awesome people, and you will you will be awesome much quicker yeah, than, than, than being on an island. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I know I'm being a little vague, but like, <laughs> like I want no, not at all. I think it's public health. do not work public health. Like if, if public health isn't where you want to be, like I right. come from a public health school. Like I love public health, but like don't work public health. If that's not where you want to be, sure. like, like work corporate, gain those skills, but don't work for an unethical corporate group that you don't align with. Right. right. Um, but but either get into a big practice, okay, that that, that successfully shown growth, right? Yeah. Like, uh, we, we had a dentist uh, two years ago join us. He only he we worked like at kind of a Medicaid mill for like a year, right? And he, I I didn't want to hire somebody one year out, right? I, I would love like three four years out, good skills, you know, worked at an Aspen, worked at a Comfort, right? But he was such a good dude that we brought him on, right? There was a lot of training involved. But like a year and a half in, like gross production, not net, but gross production. I mean, he's doing like 190000 a month, right? Yeah. I wow. mean, he, he he was doing like 50 when he started with us, right? Well, but like like he's so far ahead of where I was when I got out of school because yeah. he surrounded himself with with exceptional with an exceptional dental core, right? Right. Um, it, that's what I'm, that's what I'm trying to explain. Like, like do that, like, like find studs and get yourself with, with just exceptional folks. And you're just going to skyrocket your success with yeah. less eating glass and make more money during the process. That's brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. You did it so they don't have to. That's good. <laughs> um, yeah, that's so, what I tell them. Like, yeah. Like, the one thing I don't want you to do is have to do what I did. <laughs> like, I don't want that for you. Let me tell you. Our last dentist, she's wonderful. She's got such, she came from the army. So open-minded, so coachable, no ego, right? Like, yeah. I love it. Like, I might just hire females from here on out because she's so wonderful. No, not really. No, but 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 she is wonderful. Like, she already is, like, outproducing all of her other dentists, wow. you know, in month three, month four. Not overall, but where we were, right? She's way ahead of the curve. Wow. Why? Because she has that great mindset, but also we surrounded her with studs, right? Like even our EFTAs just crush it, right? Our expanded function dental assistants. I mean, these are very yeah. talented people. Our, our marketing's in place. Our front office team's in place. Yeah, can we get better? Absolutely. But when you surround your people with such a great team, like her expectation a year from now is $10,000 net every day, right? Wow. She's going to be producing 10000 net every day. Like that's just her expectation, right? one year into private practice, right? Oh, a lot right. of these gurus who are 60 talk about the $10,000 day, right? 
and, yep. and these are like 50 year olds trying to hit this right she's going out yeah. yeah like like just find some place where people are successful successful partnerships successful doctors right the right value system and, and you're gonna and you're gonna do great um Okay, done. Ask questions. No, that was, no, that was brilliant. Really. Um, I, I, I love all the tangents. Uh, I do. So, um, yeah, so I, I do kind of want to backpedal a little bit and, you know, we occasionally you're kind of talking about some of the numbers that, that docs within this practice are doing. Can you just sort of paint us a portrait of what this office looks like square footage wise, how many ops, how many doctors are working on a given day? How, how does this all get shared between 10 doctors? That's just insane. So I'm very, uh, open book. The teacher okay, always cool. wins. But what I tell you is I'm very growth mindset, okay? So where I'm at in six months is always different than where I, at, okay. where I was at before. Okay. So let's let's go back six months ago. This is a little easier. So cool. six months ago, <laughs> we had we had four doctors, okay? I was working um, one shift a week. My wife was working two shifts a week. And we yep. had two other dentists working, you know, three to five shifts a week. Okay. Okay. And it was a six op practice. And we were doing, let's say June, July, we were doing about 430,000 net uh, collections a month. Okay. Okay. So, you, you know, extrapolate that out. That's a six op practice doing about 5 million. Doing all right. <laughs> that, so what does that look like as far as hours go? Yeah, so it's evolved, right? I'm a change person. I probably changed too much. Uh, it's a little hard on the staff, but we, as we evolve, we kind of figure things out. So we started like seven to seven, right? Mm -hmm. But when we out of six operatories, after we added that last dentist, I was like, "Whoa, how are we going to find room for them?" Right? Um, so you know, we kept adding days. We added Saturdays, and then during COVID, we even added Sundays now. Um, but we went to split shifts, so we went to okay. seven a.m. to I think eight p.m. Okay. And put it the, 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 the middle of the day. That gave us the most flexibility with the team. And that gave us the, the most amount of hours. You know, eventually we're going to add Sunday, Saturday and Sunday evenings. But it, it's a, when you're changing mindset and cultural, you're doing a cultural shift in your entire city, right? Yeah. It, it takes a little while to, to shift people's brains to understand yeah. that 85% of 85% of people want evening and weekends for their right. uh, hiking care, right? Yeah. And I understand it. Patients want it. To get teams wrapped around that, it, it, it takes time. It's tough. So, yeah, yeah. Because that time is also not necessarily when they want to be working. So there has to be some sort of you know, cultural at, shift around that. Yeah. At first. There are <laughs> Once you shift their minds, they start to realize, like, like – you know, I, I took my kids skiing this week, okay? Right. I didn't take them skiing on Saturday, Sunday. I took them skiing in the middle of the week, yeah. right? Right. The ski mountain was right. empty, yeah. right? We rented a little place. It was half price, right? I worked all Saturday, oh, yeah. Sunday. It yeah. was great. Nobody bothered me. I could just sit at the computer and work, right? <laughs> so um, if you're a mom, like my wife does, she's amazing, right? At home, like she does everything. I'm not as helpful. What's great about extended hours like that most team members are females it forces dads to learn how to be like homemakers right it forces them to learn how to be good dads and good husbands to their wives uh commutes right you work long shifts now you're not commuting as much doesn't cost you much on gas or wear and tear on your car there's a ton of advantages for team members you know you work two days a week and you're done right three days a week and you're done yeah. it just wow. takes a while for their brains to get wrapped around that oh okay and so I that was six months ago we have four docs and six ops split shifting seven to seven. We added Saturday and Sunday. And so now uh, where are we and how did we get to 10? Okay. So um, I'm all about vision <laughs> and, and uh, modernizing yes. dentistry, right? Like how can we modernize dentistry? Right. So, you know, um, one thing that, that bothers me is access to care all under one roof, right? So I wanted to add pediatrics and I wanted to add orthodontics. So we took our, you know, 2,000 square foot facility and we tripled the space. So okay. we acquired the building, did a build out. We added nine chairs that double as both pedo and ortho. And then we added another six adult chairs right now. So right now we have 15 chairs 
and we're remodeling our original six right now. So we'll have um, 21 chairs here in about two, three months. So if we did 5 million in revenue out of six chairs, okay, I know we can do 5 million out of the second six of adult chairs, yes. right? Yeah. So that's 10 million right there. And we could probably do 6 million out of each six, but let's just assume five. And then, you know, ortho and pedo, uh, let's just say each of those ends up doing one and a half million or something, just one clinician. We'll probably end up doing more than that. But now you're, you know, now you're talking like a $13 million facility, right? Everything under one roof. Moms, you know, uh, busy lives, right? Like they don't want to take their kids out of school. They don't want to drive around town. They want everything under one roof um, being served by people they trust, right? That's the ultimate inconvenience. And so we're all about um, serving the, the busy family. And yeah. so that was my vision. Okay. So that was one practice. Okay. So we have, I, so I stopped, I pulled back from clinical. I was working one shift a week. I pulled back to make room for that last doctor, right. Who just yeah. joined us yeah. three months ago. So right now we have three doctors and my, my wife started doing the pediatrics. So we have four doctors in our flagship. Once we finish the expansion um, and the new doc, we'll give her another day. We'll probably need a new dentist towards the end of the year. Okay. So in our flagship, we'll have about five dentists. Okay. okay. You know, during COVID, things slow down a little bit. Sure. And I'm all about growth, right? So I reached out to a couple of dentists who are great guys, great clinicians, but just their situations weren't ideal. So acquired both of those practices, merged them together, added a third dentist to expanded uh, to add uh, expanded days and hours. Yeah. And I was going to do it kind of slowly. These dentists are awesome. Like one month in, two months in, they're like, Josh, let's just do it. We're ready. Oh. I'm like, okay. And one of them, he's 56, wow. 57. I love this man. Like he's like, let's do this. So uh, so in our second practice, we have three doctors in there. Both of those practices were just doing about 500, a little over 500,000. So, um, so if you commerge that together, you know, you, anyway, so, so, so now we have that practice. In the first month that we merged them together we went from 16 new patients a month to 80 and that's been our average so about a five times growth in new patients right yeah. so these dentists who were great guys but maybe their physical locations weren't that great maybe their the business side just wasn't their expertise right or the leadership side um especially like staff management and growth well we bring in our leads so our leads start like um, growing mindsets of team members right that takes off all those like burdens the ownership burdens off of these dentists uh on the marketing side i handle that right so we quite we quintuple their their patient flow right um now like all these stresses that were on them and their their spouses right those those are off of them they have this beautiful facility where they get to come in and they get five times the new patients right so you're just going to see that practice continue to grow uh it'll probably double in about a year year and a half uh go from um you know, what were they doing? 1.1 million together, a little less than that. You know, it'll probably do two. Uh, I, I think about it in months, right? Not at the end of the year. I think about like monthly revenue. Right, the monthly right. revenue will probably double in about a year and then triple in about another year. And so what does that do for them, right? Uh, as a clinical dentist, they, they way less stress. They do way better. There's the mentoring on the clinical side, right? You know, sinus lifts, um, uh, immediate implants, you know, wisdom teeth, all that kind of mentoring to help them like elevate their, their billings per hour. Right. Um, and then, uh, also their equity growth, right? So as that practice doubles, triples, the value that they own in that practice doubles or triples, right? So yeah. they have way less stress. They're producing way more. And we got our leads in there running the team. So all that team stress, which is the number one stress in dentistry uh, outside of the financial, uh, is going to get better. And then there's three doctors under one roof, right? So what happens to overhead, right? Yeah. yeah. Totally drops. So that's practice number two. Well, anytime I have free time on my hands, it's like, okay, what's next? What's next? How can we change <laughs> dentistry for the community, right? How can we make it better for everybody, right? And and also quality of life for all the dentists and all our partners, right? Like I have one dentist um, in my flagship, Dr. Ball. I mean, he cut back to two days a week. He works two long days, Thursday, Fridays, right? So he comes in on Wednesdays, does like our team meetings and our leadership meetings. But uh, he bought a farm in Idaho, like an hour and a half away. 
So wow. he goes home four days a week just to spend time with his family, right? And, and you, you know, like the average incomes for dentists, right? He makes four times as much as the average dentist in those two days a week. Yeah. Four times. So that's eight times as efficient as the average dentist, right? right. Dentistry right. is so inefficient. Oh, yeah. If you team up with complementary people, right? Dr. Bill, Dr. Ball has an amazing skill set, right? He's a great leader, great person, and a great clinical skill set. I, I bring the business side, right? Between the two of us, he's eight times more efficient than the average dentist, right? Unreal. It's it's insane, right? Yeah. So, like, people need to get out of their own way. They need to let go of their egos, right? They need to focus on teaming up with each other, and we can just do magical things for the community. Right. Yep. Like we're open seven days a week. How awesome is that for moms and families and people are breaking teeth? It's amazing for them. How awesome is it for our teams? Yep. Right. We power our teams to grow our, our team members. There's no ceiling on them. They can keep growing every year. Right. They get paid more every year. They grow as individuals, as human beings every year. Like it's a win for the community. It's a win for our patients. It's a win for our teams. And it's a win for our doctors. I love what you were saying um, about how dentistry is being run so inefficiently and you know we talk about average incomes for dentists and such and you know one thing i'm i'm saying and another thing you mentioned was you know you said you know 85 percent of the time when people want to come to dentists is you know on evenings or on the weekend and it's just not when dental practices are open and i see that you know you're you're making those things available in a way that works for everybody and i think that really uh us being able to you know think in a novel way about how dentistry should be administered to the public and making it more available and making it more convenient in a similar vein to how, you know, tech and other modern companies, like you mentioned earlier, are doing. I think that really opens up so many more possibilities and people are thinking so scarcely now about dentistry and how it's just not what it used to be. Um, you know, how the debt is just so high and it's not, it's starting to not, you know, be the job it used to be. Now it's like, ranked nine and like whatever list they use for the best jobs. And I think that, you know, what this is showing is that if you're willing to think differently and think abundantly and we're able to band together and make win-win situations, there's just a whole new realm of excellence that we can really achieve. And so um, I really love how you're, you know, bringing that together and kind of breaking some, some norms and expectations people have about what can be done in dentistry. Another thing that's really cool that I know, you know, you brought up at the beginning and you haven't necessarily touched on uh, again was, uh, your love for commercial real estate, like through this expansion and through all oh, these sure. different uh, locations, like you're getting to kind of flex that muscle too, which I think is super, super cool that you're able to, you know, blend that in with the, the dentistry side of your career as well. Yes, absolutely. And I will dive in if you'd like me to dive in. <laughs> sure. Let's go there. Yeah, yeah by all means. I mean, I, oh. I think the people that think similarly to you are going to have similar interests. So let's hear it. So, Take a step back. You can only be good at so many things in life, okay? E even as I develop and grow my uh, – strengthen my business of dentistry muscles, right, it's at the cost of my clinical yeah. muscles, right? My, my clinical muscles are, de are, are atrophying as my business. So you can only be good at so many things. So the more you focus on what you're really passionate about, what you want to be good at, the better, okay? So I would really stick to like – two things okay <laughs> whatever those are okay. you had. <laughs> so for me um you know real estate development and dentistry are those things but when i hear dentists talk about investing in a car wash investing in pizza place like uh, subways what you got to understand is dentistry has barriers to entry right yeah that prior to 10 years ago really protected us and less and less but that's why dentistries have a 0.4% failure rate is because the competition isn't too fierce because, you know, major corporate hasn't been in it for 30 years. Okay. Right. But the consolidation of dentistry is happening, as you guys know, just like it happened in banking, movie theaters, medicine, every other industry. Right. So when you, if you're thinking about doing something in addition to dentistry, like Think about it. You're successful in dentistry because you have those high barriers to entry and you're focused, right? It doesn't mean you're going to be successful in these other areas. Usually you're not. So I really right. want to put that precautionary tail out there, okay? And the, yeah. the, the profit margins and the profitability, there's I've looked. There's no better investment than, than dentistry, okay? Right, right. So if you're doing average in dentistry, you're probably not going to be doing average in any other industry. Like you're, 
like your systems and your ability to lead there is, you know, it needs some work. Unless <laughs> all these other areas really aligns with your strengths, right? Unless you of have course. a yes, lot yes, of skills yes. that you're going to be really good at this. But don't don't think because you're right. doing good in dentistry, you're going to do good in this other stuff. It, 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 exactly. You're not protected in those other areas. Easy mode. Yeah. And yeah. you're getting distracted. Like I used to do coaching, okay? And I love coaching. And I think mm -hmm. when I get into the later years of my life, I will coach again. But right now it's a distraction. It just pulls my focus from my other commitments to my to my doctors, to my team. Yeah. So um, so I don't coach anymore. So um, where were we? Okay. So that disclaimer in place, right? <laughs> Commercial real estate aligns with what I enjoy. Okay. I am a strategic yeah. thinker. Okay. In commercial real estate, it's very much about strategic thinking, visionary, right? Seeing what, not what a building is, but what it could be. Right. Uh, um, there's also, um, there's also synergies between commercial real estate and dentistry. So a commercial building, you know, it's worth more if it has a medical tenant in it. Okay. Yeah. And so if you buy a building, put a little lipstick on it, which is commercial talk for make it look a little nicer and throw a dentist in it, that building's going to be valued at a higher number. Okay. So there are mm -hmm. synergies there. Okay. And dental dentists are very good tenants, right? We don't tend to go out of business. We tend to pay our rents, right? We tend not to attract the wrong type of uh, uh, customer base. So there are synergies there. There's also a lot of tax advantages with real estate, right? Yeah. Um, that's how the, the tax system's built. Now, those tax advantages, Biden's already mentioned that he, that he doesn't like them and he's going to target them. So the, the tax advantages of dentistry right now, I mean, of uh, real estate may not be there like they were for the last, I don't know, 30, 50, 100 years. Um, the third thing to consider, which I've very much run into, is um, cash. So as you scale up, cash becomes scarce, okay? Yeah. On dentistry, at first, you're required to put 0% down on dental practices, right? There's very few assets you put 0% down on, right? And so yeah. dentistry, it's easier to scale there. Real estate usually requires about 25% down. OK, so if you're adding the real estate, you're kind of stealing from your growth on the dental side. OK, you, your growth trajectory, okay. if you want to own multiple practices, is going to be very limited if you start adding the real estate, unless you have financial partners to infuse cash. So I don't want to get too much yeah. into it. I would just say, like, you know, if you can buy your building that you're in, like buy your building. If, if you want to, if you have a passion for real estate, right? You don't, you don't, oh, I like what Josh said. Yeah, yeah, I should do that. No, 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 no. Only do it if it's something you're really passionate about, your strengths align with it. Um, there's lots of other things to do with your time, like spend it with your family, like, like a lot of other better things to do or, or reinvest in dentistry. Yeah, no, I think that's a brilliant point because you hear so much about people adopting side hustles. And I think that, you know, a lot of times those are sort of passion projects that people are doing. And, you know, that's great. I mean, if that's just what they want to do, um, but to try and make financial sense of it and, and you know, it has to have like a, a higher ceiling than just focusing on your dental practices and focusing on growing that and, and doing what you can strategically. And so um, I think people really got to think about that and, you know, trying to have all these different baskets. I just don't, I don't quite get it. Yeah. I, I would not focus on real estate. I Yeah. I mean, by, yeah. <laughs> there's tax benefits, but yeah. Um, if you focus on the dentistry, um, that's a probably a better business decision. Um, yeah. But, but you know, right. if somebody's super passionate about something, they just got to do it, right? That, that, Absolutely. So, yeah. But don't get distracted. Most 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 of these things are a distraction. Yeah. yeah. If, so if someone has a a side hustle that's better than dentistry, I'd definitely be interested to hear what it is because <laughs> I'm not sure. sure it's out there. On the books. Yeah. The, yeah. Only thing I've ever seen, the only thing I've ever seen is um, the scalability of tech, right? So software sure. scalable. Or if you're selling, like, you know, people sell like a, a workout PDF for like 10 bucks, right? That's very scalable, right? If you have an amazing yeah. PDF that nobody else has, once you create it and market it a little, you're not doing anything, right? It's just right. automatic, right? right? So this, yeah. that's more scalable than working with your hands. Um, but True. outside of something like that, I, I haven't, I haven't seen it. Right. I've been listening to the Dentist Money Show since the very beginning. 
And one of the things that drew me to Dentist Advisors' philosophy of financial advising was this thing called the elements. They have taken your complex financial situation and broken it down into these 12 easy-to-understand categories that allow you to see where you're at right now, where you want to go, and, and the steps along the way. When I first learned about the elements, I actually thought, you know what, I'm just going to create a Google Doc of this for myself and track it on my own. However, I am lazy and there's just not enough time and there's really more to it than I initially understood. Fortunately, Dentist Advisors is now building the Elements app that allows you to get organized, analyze your situation like a pro, and ultimately make smart financial decisions that can be validated by a human financial advisor via chat in the app. I, Richard Lowe, me, I am a paying beta user of the Elements app. And if you want to be part of this exclusive early beta access group, Dentist Advisors has put together a combination of three things. First, they are holding a weekly virtual class to help you learn the fundamentals of personal finance using the Elements app. Next, you get early access to the app at an incredible price available only to early beta users. Finally, like I mentioned before, you'll also have access to advisors via chat within the app to help guide your journey. If you want to be part of this early access beta, go to dentistadvisors.com slash shared beta. Once again, to lock this in today like I've done, go to dentistadvisors.com slash shared beta. So uh, another thing I, I wanted to ask, just to kind of pull back to, um, you know, your practice and, and things that are going on in dentistry. So, um, you know, you, you mentioned that there are now you know, 10 dentists that have been brought on uh, within this within this group here. How do how do things work on, you know, an organizational level? Like how how are decisions made between all these people and how do you communicate these things? How often are you having, you know, like group level meetings and such? How does that really work, you know, in a hierarchy type of way? You have to be very intentional and you got to over communicate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yesterday I was working on our master meeting list, right? Because I want to have a clear intention about our cadence of meetings. And, and it's a lot. So sure. I'll, I'll give you a brief, uh, brief thing. At the practice level, we have weekly uh, leadership meetings. Well, right. all the leads and doctors need to get together. And there's basic structures out there that you can look at. Attraction is a really good. Uh, more familiar with it. Yep. So the level 10 meetings is, is, is a good one. And so you have to have the leadership meeting every week. So everything's flushed out. How are you going to look at your scoreboard? How are we doing? You know, and then any opportunities that pop up, you got to discuss them and, and uh, just decide on solutions and implement. And then you got to have a team meeting. Uh, maybe not every week. We do one every week, but you don't have to have one every week. But you have to communicate with your team. Let them know what, know what's going on. Trainings, right? Trainings are huge. Most of the dentists skip on trainings. That's that's the number one way to elevate your staff. So that's on a practice by practice level, and and, uh, and then quarterly, you got to have your quarterly retreats to plan your 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 quarterly. I call them outcomes. Uh, each year, I, I kind of change the name. You know, is it a is it a big, hairy, audacious goal? Is it a a milestone? I call them outcomes now because that's really what I'm we're trying to get after is not the goal but the outcome. So you got to set your quarterly outcomes. Okay, so those are the three meetings: leadership. Weekly leadership, weekly team meetings, and then quarterly retreats. That's just at the practice level. On the the support level, right now you got to have uh, meetings with your 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 platform. You know your HR, your accounting, your finance, accounts payable, like all of those things, right? The ones where you're really developing, like the HR, those types of things, those need to be hung of weekly as well. And then. Um, you know, meeting with your finance people, your accountants, uh, that can be monthly, uh, unless you're trying to implement new stuff and that needs to be every week or every two weeks. So really you get in Google, your Google calendar and you set up a lot of automated, um, meetings, right. And that fills up half your week. And then your other half your week is like, get stuff done, um, build systems. And, and, uh, so, um, yeah, we literally have, I was looking at it yesterday. We probably have nine different meeting types um, mm-hmm. with, with with each of their cadence um, to to make this successful. Um, doctor wow. mentorship meetings too, right? You got to have a mentor, doctor, and a mentee. You got to have those going. 
and in partnership meetings as well. Very nice. So those, I'm, I'm curious about the mentorship too. So the, uh, the partner doctors here, are they sort of paired off in a way, sort of like mentor mentee couples or how does that work? Yeah. So, you know, th- there's another saying, uh, what got us here won't get us there. Right. So prior it was me, right. right? Coaching term. Like, like it. <laughs> just hands on all the time, but you know, I'm not scalable, right. I can't mentor that many doctors, right? I, I can't right, do it. I have other hats I'm wearing. So, um, so yeah, now it's more, yeah, senior mentor doctor, you know, regular meetings with the mentee. And uh, right now that's one of the platforms we're flushing out. We're, we're taking it from more just relationship based to more structured. Um, I have like a 80 page mentorship document, right? Uh, that goes over all our clinical tidbits, you know, wisdom teeth, all these things. It's 80 pages long, uh, but you can't just dump that on somebody, right? Uh, not, not not that many people can just like blow through 80 pages and process it, right? So we're really staging it into like weeks. Here's this section. Here's this section. And then weekly too, you know, you, re- you review cases. You do audits of treatment. Um, really, it's the recruitment, the onboarding, and training. And so we're really crystallizing that this quarter for both our doctors and both our and our team as well so um i tend to just grow so i've been surrounding myself with systems people who are more operational to help (laughs) me uh, really define things um and once you have systems in place i mean it's people people's number one but you need that system systems underneath supporting them to one reduce chaos right the pressure and noise that they're feeling but two um, it also helps give them freedom, right? My, my lead can't be free to grow unless we create that structure uh, around them to, to free them. Right. Right. Yeah. So it kind of sounds like you're, you've taken on uh, more as time has gone on, you've taken on a more visionary role and you sort of brought on more people who are more integrator, you know, types that can build those sorts of systems as you onboard more people. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, so every year, you look at your strengths and then you try to put yourself in your strengths. And yeah. every year as you have more team members, there's more bandwidth available. You refine your strengths. So visionary. Yes, that's one of my strengths. Um, you know, mentoring and, and talking to people and getting to know them and finding their their challenges and helping create solutions to those. That's another one of my strengths. Right. And so yeah. I've been moving more and more towards visionary and you know, mergers and acquisitions. That's just like the strength of my skill set. But I'm only able to do mm-hmm. that because now I have wonderful clinical dentists. I have wonderful operations folks, right? Um, so it, it's not like, oh, I can just become a visionary and all my problems are solved because that's what I'm really good at, right? No, I have right. to wear like every hat, every yeah. responsibility hat in the business for so long, right? I had yeah. to wear every hat. And um yeah. So baby steps. Um, yeah. You know, it, it's interesting because as you were talking, I was thinking about that myself is, you know, was it necessary, was it really necessary for you to have worn all those hats as you went along through your journey and you ate so much glass, right? Um, was that really necessary for you to fulfill the role you did? Perhaps not, but I do think it's an edge that you have because you can empathize with all those people that have kind of, that are kind of growing into their own leadership within that larger group of things. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I, I look. I, I definitely look at the, the 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 benefit of all that learning. Uh, oh, you have to. <laughs> that and appreciate that. But, but again, yeah. like I, I would never wish that on anybody. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, you talk to somebody who grew up on the streets, right? Gosh, yeah. tough, right? They're like, like they, they they overcome all that. Like, like they didn't have a lot of support growing up. Like you admire these people. They they've got these amazing traits, but you wouldn't wish it on anybody, right? Right. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, so I, I kind of, you know, want to sort of go through, you know, this whole progression that you had from, you know, the six op startup that was relying on you 28 patients in the first month, kind of, you know, stumbling along, then you had this, you know, big uh, jump after year one, after you considered selling and that didn't work out, thankfully. Um, and then things sort of took off. And it seemed like, you know, along the way, you were kind of taking these steps and and this model was growing and changing and going through all these different, uh, you know, it was leapfrogging to different models and, and growing out to something much larger um, and bringing on all these docs. You know, how would you, I mean, if you could have done it, like if you could do it all over again, 
how would you have done it differently? How, how could you have done this more efficiently and gotten to where you are more quickly? And would you have done it differently? Yeah, no, I'll share, but you know, I, you don't really know how that would have worked out. Right. But, but I will. Right. I, I don't, I will yeah, right. So there are certain, I, I mean, I, I just think about the people I've met now, these like amazing human beings who have built these successful dental groups. Um, I know them all over the country, right? I can. I, I have a, a friend in Portland with 10 practices. I have a friend in upstate New York with five, six, or seven. I don't know. They keep adding them. I have a friend in Boston with four. I have a friend in San Antonio, like I said, with the one. Um, I have a friend in Tacoma with, with, with one huge practice. <laughs> He's like me. He keeps growing. He's, he's insane. Uh, I love that guy. And, and, you know, the best situation for me probably would have been joining one of these guys okay. and having them mentor me. Right. Okay. It, the challenge was, was I didn't know any of those guys when I got out of school. Right. I didn't know out of the, any of those guys until I started my own business and we kind of all found each other. Right. Mainly yeah. through Facebook groups. Right. You, you yeah. start to just, you're on these Facebook groups and you start to pick up who the, who the, um, who the people are who really know what they're doing or, or maybe they don't know what they're doing yet, but the, gosh, their mindset, the things they're doing are so amazing. You, you surround yourself with those people. And now, now I know those people, those are the people I would recommend, um, um, recommend finding, um, yeah. they'll help you get where you want to be as, 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 as fast as possible. Um, I can start naming those people off if you want. I mean, <laughs> by all means, I, let's let's throw out some coattails for people to start hanging on to. I kind of like this idea. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> Justin Bowler up in Calgary. Uh, if you ever listen to any of his podcasts, the guy is like a ten out of ten on communication. That that guy is amazing. Uh, what is his podcast? Uh, he doesn't have his own podcast, but as a guest. Oh, on as a guest. Okay. And, um, I'll, I'll get some information on him later. Cause I, I think I'd love to have more people like, um, more people like you and, and more people like him on yeah, here. Cause I am loving it. Um, Kwansu Lee out of Tacoma. He has a practice very similar to mine, but larger he started at the same time. Kwansu is, is, is a hustler. That guy works his butt off. He's such a good guy. I think they, they're collecting probably like 700,000 this month. Like just, just stud. Um, Portland, um, um, I don't know if those guys want me to share, but but they're they're a good group of guys. <laughs> there. Um, um, let's see here, Anthony Doe uh, in McKinney, Texas. Yeah, he's a great guy. Um, uh, Goldwyn in in uh, Jaquinto in San Antonio. He's got a large practice, like I said, ortho based. Um, Justin. Let's see, uh, Jason Tenuri, uh, Finger Lakes Dental up in, um, in uh, upstate New York. Uh, Jason is an amazing human being. Uh, he's so good at building systems. He's just a great human being, though, like family. Uh, I mean, his goal is to give away, like, in, in hunger in his area, to give away, like, $10 million to the local, like, food bank wow. when he retires. Like, that's his goal. He's, like, such a good guy. Um, Steve uh, Markowitz in, um, in Boston. Um, he's got four practices. Um, these are just, these are the kind of guys that like yeah. I would work for. Like, these are such good people, hardworking people that, you know, they're going to take you to a good place. Uh, yeah. awesome. uh, I got friends in Oklahoma, um, Missouri. I, I mean, these are just good people. So anyways, there's plenty people, of people. <laughs> yeah, I feel like That's I'm, getting, awesome. I'm getting boring, but yeah, there's a lot yeah, of no, people in the all. country yeah. um, that, that have these 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 small groups that just are. Yeah. You look at the reviews; they all have the best reviews in town. You know what I mean? 400, yeah. 500, 600 five star reviews in Google. Yeah. Uh, they're rapidly growing every year, mm -hmm. right? Every year. That, that that's another thing you look at, right? Well, what are the reviews like online? And what's their growth rate? If you want to be a good interviewee, right? If you're looking for a good practice to, to, to look for, ask what their year over year growth has been the last five years, right? And look at their online reviews. That's good. You're yeah. going to see who the successful yeah. uh, people are. Success leaves clues, right? So like whatever you want to do in dentistry, um, even if you think it's you know particularly unique or novel, chances are there's 
at least a handful of people around the country that, you know, you could pick their brains and, and learn from their experiences instead of having to experience it yourself. And, um, you know, I, I think that finding analogs for the vision that you have and letting those people sort of expand your vision and clarify it um, is extremely important. There's no reason not to do it. The return on it is just, you know, unquantifiable. Um, so one thing I, I, I'm also really curious about is, you know, we, we've talked a lot about how you got to where you are currently. What is your five-year vision? Where Where is your practice in five years? I know, I know you said that, you know, six months, a lot can change, but kind of what's going on in your head about how you want to grow and what you want to build? Yeah. So for me, it comes back to, you know, radically uh, shaping dentistry, uh, for, again, for the community, for our, yeah. our patients, for our team, and for our doctors. So, um, you know... I believe in smart goals, so it's got to be trackable, right? <laughs> so the the easiest way to to track impact is is revenue, right? Because because right. patients vote with their with their feet and with their pocket yeah. dollars, yeah. right? Sure. So um, yeah. so I tend to think about value and impact in in terms of revenue goals. So uh, just with like the practices we have now, we'll probably do about ten million uh, this year. And uh, just through adding practices and adding doctors uh, with our model, which the community is responding to, right? With our growth, you know, we grow about 30% a year. So if you just kind of protect those numbers and, and the team I've surrounded uh, uh, myself with, I think our five, five year goal is uh, 50 million. Wow. So that's awesome. Yeah, it's, it's exciting. But you got to see the people I'm teamed up with. I mean, these are like yeah. absolute awesome folks. And so, yeah. Um, when, when you have that kind of wonderful team in place, um, people respond to that. Doctors respond to that. Um, t- team members, I mean, it, it, just magnetism, right? You tend to attract, right. um, um, wonderful people. So, um, yeah, we're excited. I, I think we're going to change dentistry in, um, in Eastern Washington and, and Northern Idaho. And, mm-hmm. um, as we mature our platform a little bit to provide that structure, um, I, I could see us, you know, Western Washington, Canada, Oregon, Montana. Um, I, yeah, it, it's it's going to be fun. So look out, world. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. I, well, yeah, Josh. I mean, I I believe it. You know, I don't I don't think that you know you're you know overstating or overestimating. Um, at all, what you can do uh, with the sort of magnetism that you have. I think you're the uh, you're the Tony Stark to your Dental Avengers. I think you've got a wonderful team together, and um, you know the, the growth trajectory you guys have is really admirable. So, um, you know, I, I really want to thank you for being willing to come on and and you know share about your journey, your experience, and and all the ground glass that you, that you have um, to show for it. Um, so, yeah, thank you so much for it. And I, I, I probably speaking for Peyton here, but I I've personally learned a lot. Absolutely. Ty, it was my pleasure. Both of you are well spoken. You're you're both hungry, um, humble, smart individuals, and uh, I wish you guys the best. And anything I can do to support, uh, if you guys have questions, you just let me know. If any of your listeners have questions, you can just email me uh, River R I V E R uh, Cochran C O C H R A N at gmail dot com. Just email me. Happy to help. Um, you know you know, half to two thirds of people don't go to the dentist regularly. Right. So you've heard this before. Mm -hmm. We're not competing against other dentists, right? We're we're competing against every, every, all the other stuff. stuff, (laughs) Right. So if we can change um, access to care in dentistry, if we can change the, the amount of decay, the amount of periodontal disease that are in our communities, we can do so much to extend the the quality of life for our patients and communities and extend the uh, the lifespan, right? I, I see if, if dental health all of a sudden, not all of a sudden, but if we work on it, right, people are going to the dentist. I have no problem seeing people, you know, live living 15 years later with a full set of teeth, right? They're actually chewing, yeah. right? And living, yeah. that, that's ultimately the outcomes I'm looking for and and really supporting my team along that journey and really helping grow them to have the best um their best lives both professionally and personally so we can do it together boys (laughs) yeah that that is a beautiful sentiment and uh, i think that's a great note to leave off on so again josh thank you so much Uh, we're probably going to be bothering you again to bring you back on the show at some point because i'm sure we're going to get some uh some listener questions uh to get a little more specific about some of the things you're doing and how you've implemented them because uh you know it's, it's quite remarkable what you've done and you know just to know that you have 
um, so much of a, a mission and vision is, is in terms of impact uh, behind it all is is really something inspirational. So thank you again. It's my pleasure, Ty. Take care. All right, everyone. So that wraps up this two part series here with Dr. Josh Cochran. Uh, I I really really enjoyed hearing seeing and hearing his uh, just how his ownership experience has been so far. Uh, he's done a lot of really really cool stuff. Um, just as far as you know the model he uses, the growth he's seen, and how he's able to use each person's unique abilities um, to their to their strong suit, you know. Uh, it's just, it's really cool for it all to come together and have a product that benefits, you know, the doctors, it benefits the staff, it benefits the patients. Uh, it's really just a great all-around model that he has. Yeah, you know, I, he mentioned uh, quite a number of things as far as, you know, what he wanted to offer his partner um, dentists. And it was, you know, clinical autonomy and support. Um, it was, you know, a modern uh, dental practice. Um, it was, you know, living your best year ever, which actually I think that was separate in the conversation. But, uh, you know, I, I would probably uh, wager that he you know, makes that happen for his partner, Dennis, he gives them um, something larger than what they had when they had 100% of their own thing, right? Um, and how he structured that model to fulfill the things that he wants to promise to these partners. And, you know, uh, we'll, we'll probably need to have one of his partners on at some point just to kind of talk about their experience of everything. But, um, you know, I, I think his ability to fulfill those promises and give people that sort of environment and that sort of support and um, be that sort of rising tide that lifts all boats. I think that's really the, the most powerful thing that he's been able to do. And we can kind of, you know, get into, you know, how he structured these agreements and everything and, um, you know, how he made it sticky. Um, but ultimately, it was that, you know, that real commitment to abundance and, um, you know, to being willing to share and grow and to give something up um, so that you can get something um, greater uh, later on. And that investment that you're making is in the people that you're bringing on. And he was able to, you know, provide structure for clinical mentorship for, um, you know, he was able to provide support to kind of allow people to step back from some of the business and systems things that were sort of holding them back in their own practices. And it, it's like for whatever gap these partners had, he was able to fill it. And what made them work for this whole group was just that sort of mentality and that um, that commitment to abundance. And so um, the way that he was able to pull that off was really splendid. Definitely, definitely. Yeah, I, I couldn't agree more with everything you said. Um, he, his just implementation of everything was was spot on. Yeah. And honestly, I, I can't wait to see what um, what he does in the future. I think it's just going to be incredible. Yeah, no, uh, the trajectory is insane. And, you know, I... Didn't think I'd be saying it by the end of the episode, but hey, think about partnerships, right? Um, I, I I still am not a huge fan of like, you know, you and your dental school buddy just go in on a practice together because you just kind of, uh, you know, want to hang out and have a practice. But um, I think that if you can find a situation like this um, and really catapult yourself into something greater, especially coming on out of school and, and you know, getting yourself that sort of uh, uh, mentorship opportunity and, and, you know, using all that, you know, sort of equity to get yourself into a situation that would have been really pretty difficult to do on your own. Um, I think it is a, a viable solution for people, you know, coming out of school that, you know, have that entrepreneurial itch, but, uh, just kind of want to get a leg up on things and don't mind being a part of something much greater. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm a big fan of the idea and you know what, Hey, being a partner in larger group, Maybe that becomes, you know, something I can advise people on and say, hey, you know, that's not a bad route to go. Um, I think these are still uh, sort of unicorn practices. There's there's several that um, Josh name dropped on here, which I appreciate. Um, and hopefully they all appreciate it, too. Um, but, you know, we, I, I do want to have some more characters like this on and kind of talk a little bit more about this concept. And I think that um, the ways in which it is going to impact dentistry, not just for the consumer, but also for doctors um, is really interesting. You know, he talks so much about the inefficiency of, of dental practices and how we're not really structuring ourselves around what people want, just sort of like what's been done. Um, I think that was one of the most, uh, you know, uh, groundbreaking things that we touched on. Yeah. Yeah. And, and with the partnerships, he touched on the importance of aligning with values, uh, getting people that are hardworking and maybe had good partnerships in the past. Uh, I yeah. thought, those two things were like huge as far as um, getting a partnership that actually works. And he talked about it in the episode, but the partnership that didn't work, he realized uh, almost before it even happened, it's like, Hey, like this probably isn't going to work out. I can kind of see where it might um, kind of falter. Um, but he, you know, he's, he's created something great. And I think the partnerships have been a big part of that. 
for sure. Yeah, we'll probably have to have some people on here that experience really terrible partnerships just to sort of, you know, make everything right in the universe. But um, th I think this was a really, really good um, example of how it can work and how it can make something, you know, really big and uh, transformative. So hope you guys all enjoyed it. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we have Josh back on or uh, some more people like him. So again, thank you so much to Dr. Josh Cochran uh, for coming on and I hope you all enjoyed it.